Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now we've had a lot of activity in the last few months about generative AI, ChatGPT, Bing, Bard and so on. And one of the things that these models can do is they can produce code. So you say, write me a function to do something and it will give you the code. And if you iterate enough, you can actually quite to get some kind of software out of it, maybe even a small app and so on. However, that has got me thinking there is a difference between software engineering and coding. I want to do a video about that, but that's not this video. This video is looking at some of the mistakes that have happened in the software industry that have led to some pretty big disasters, rockets blowing up, uh, uh, computer systems crashing on fighter planes, uh, and so on. So this video, I want to look at five examples of catastrophic software failures that have led to some pretty spectacular results. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. <laughs> Five spectacular failures caused by software bugs. Software bugs gone wrong, five wild examples. Okay, so what's the first one? So I'm putting this one first uh, because it happened most recently. If uh, anyone in Europe will remember that the National Air Traffic Services uh, in the UK had a big problem. More than 1,500 flights were grounded and cancelled with thousands more delayed after Britain's National Air Traffic Service experienced in quotes, technical issues on Monday, August 28th, 2023. And there was a knock on effect with more cancellations on the Tuesday as the airlines strive to recover their schedules. And what's worse is that that Monday is actually a public holiday. So many people were flying out or flying back in from long weekends and so on. So the problem started with a flight plan that included two waypoints, that's, you know, locations along a route that were geographically distinct, but they had the same name. And then what happens is the software that's trying to uh, do this looked at it and saw, the, saw that both waypoints were located outside of the UK, one towards the beginning of the route and one towards the end, approximately 4,000 nautical miles apart. And then as it processes that, it tries to find the entry and exit points from UK airspace. Because of the duplicate names, the software found an entry point and an exit point with the same names, but geographically different. Therefore, the software could not extract a valid UK portion of the flight plan between those two points. And this caused the software to switch to a manual override mode. And then, of course, chaos ensued. Now, while we're on the topic of planes, uh, there was a time when 12 F-22 Raptors were forced home after a computer crash in February of 2007. A software bug caused the navigation computer of the F-22 Raptor to crash while it crossed the international date line. So as they were flying, they went across the international date line. That's where one day ends and the other day uh, begins. Uh, and the bug caused multiple computer systems on the aircraft to crash, including navigation, fuel subsystems and partial communications. All attempts to reboot the system failed and the aircraft had to return to their base, which was in Hawaii. Fortunately, there were no injuries or damage to the aircraft. So, one of the most advanced weapon systems in the world tripped as it passed over an imaginary line. Now, one very expensive failure was the Ariane 5 rocket uh, in flight 501. In 1996, the European Space Agency's Ariane 5 rocket self-destructed after 40 seconds after liftoff due to a software error that occurred when converting a 64-bit floating point number to a signed 16-bit integer. The goal of the mission was to launch four cluster satellites. They are a constellation of a uh, European Space Agency research satellites into orbit. However, the mission ended in failure when the rocket veered off its flight path and exploded after 40 seconds. And the reason for this was the Ariane 5 reused code from the inertial reference platform from the previous generation rocket, the Ariane 4. But the early part of the Ariane's flight path differed from that from the Ariane 4. This caused the calculations in the alignment function to be unexpectedly high. This resulted in overflow during a data conversion from a 64-bit floating point number to 16-bit integer value. The incident resulted in approximately $370 million worth of loss and is considered one of history's most expensive software glitches. Knight Capital Group trading algorithm glitch. So in August of 2012, Knight Capital Group experienced a trading bug that resulted in significant financial losses. In less than an hour, Knight Capital Computers executed a series of automatic orders that were supposed to be spread out over several days. As a result, millions of shares exchanged hands unexpectedly and reversing those erroneous trades cost almost half 
half a billion dollars, nearly four times the company's previous year's profit. The company almost went bankrupt. However, there was a group of investors who stumped up the $400 million and was able to save the company. And these things only don't happen here on Earth. They also happen out uh, on other planets. In this case, the Mars Climate Orbiter. A simple unit conversion error between metric and imperial units led to the loss of NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter in 1999. The Mars Climate Orbiter was a robotic space probe launched by NASA's JPL on the December 11th, 1998 with the purpose of studying Mars's climate, atmosphere and surface changes. However, the mission ended in failure due to a software bug that caused the spacecraft to encounter to Mars at a lower than anticipated altitude. As a result, the orbiter disintegrated due to atmospheric stress. Well, what happened? The primary cause of this failure was a software error in which one piece of ground software supplied by Lockheed Martin produced results in United States customary units, pounds, while a second system supplied by NASA expected these results to be in the SI units, in this case, Newtons. So there we go, the classic thing of can you convert from miles to kilometres and from, you know, from pounds to kilograms and all this kind of stuff. The discrepancy left to an erroneous trajectory calculation and resulted in the loss of the spacecraft. Can we all please just switch, please, to kilometres and metres and kilograms and, you know, things that have tens and hundreds and things in them. Now, of course, there are plenty of other examples, uh, some of them, unfortunately, a bit more serious. If you do know some good ones, uh, that do tell us in the comments below so that we can see some of your favourite examples of software gone wild. However, not all software glitches end without human loss of life. And of course, this is much more serious and much more sombre. There is a radiation therapy machine that in the 80s, this medical device delivered lethal radiation doses to patients due to software related safety flaws and several patients unfortunately died as a result. And more recently, the Boeing 737 MAX system, the software known as uh, MCAX, Maneuvering Characteristic Augmentation System, played a role in two fatal crashes of Boeing 737 aircraft in 2018 and 2019. This led to significant loss of life and to significant scrutiny about the design of the aircraft's software. So as I said at the beginning, there is a difference between coding and software engineering. And I will make a video about that. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below uh, as I prepare myself to make that video. But here's an interesting thing. Tell me in the comments below, what do you think? What would you class as a big computer program? How, how many lines of code is a big computer program to you? And uh, let's have a bit of fun with that and see, see what we find out. Okay, until then, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos and you're interested in that next one I'm going to make, then, hey, stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.